Hi, my name is Yenji Rohala and I'm a member of the Scala Center team. Today, I'm going to show you how to use JavaScript and TypeScript libraries in your Scala.js applications. In this tutorial, we'll recreate an example from a Paper.js website, which creates spiral raster from an image. After finishing up this tutorial, we should end up with the following animation. As a prerequisite for this tutorial, we will require Java Runtime, Scala and its tooling, such as Scala Build Tool. We will also need Node.js and Node with Yarn. At last, having a configured ID will help us write code and test it. If you don't know how to set up any of those, please have a look at our prior tutorials on Let's Talk About Scala Free Series. If you have never used Scala.js, I also recommend checking out the Getting Started tutorial as it deeply explains how to set up, run, and test your application. All the links will be in the description. To start a new project, we'll use Scala Gitter template. Gitter A is a template engine which helps us to generate files and directories published on Gitter repositories. As this is Scala.js tutorial, we'll start with Scala.js with template. To start the initialization process, we will run sbd new scala.js slash vid.g8 in your shell. After a while, the tool will download necessary dependencies and we will be prompted for configuring the project. First, we will be asked for a project name. Here, we will call it just interoperability. Subsequently, we will be prompted which package manager will be used, yarn or npm. It should finish with a confirmation that the template was applied and successfully created. As I mentioned before, in this tutorial, we will be recreating Paper.js example. To achieve it, we first need to add it to our dependencies by running yarn at Paper.js. There are many ways to interact with JavaScript or TypeScript with Scala.js. First, we can use JS Dynamic to access and manipulate the properties and methods of the JavaScript or TypeScript object. This is useful when you don't have the type information of the object and want to avoid manually writing facets for it. Another option is to use facets directly provided with the library. This is a great option available because it allows us to take advantage of the type safety and combine time checking that Scala.js offers. In some cases, however, we may need to manually write facets for a JavaScript or TypeScript library that doesn't come with predefined facets. This can be a bit tedious, but it allows us to fully leverage the power of Scala.js and to use the library in a type safe manner. Finally, we can use the scalability type plugin to generate facets for us automatically. This can save us a lot of time and effort, especially when dealing with large and complex libraries. The generated facets may not always be perfect, but they can serve as a good starting point and can be customized to fit our specific needs. In most cases, we would rather not use the first option due to the loss of the type safety. We can also use the second option because Paper.js doesn't come with preloaded Scala.js facets, so we are left with two options. Writing facets manually or using scalably typed, which both I will showcase in the next part of the presentation. I will start with manually writing facet for Paper.js. Our application will need only a subset of functional ID. So for this tutorial, we will limit it only to necessary methods and classes being access to the canvas view and its center, path of operations such as add and insert, raster including method upload and get average color. We will also need point and its operator methods. Lastly, we need to set up the canvas. To write our facets, we will use TypeScript definition as our starting point. Let's start with top-level methods and classes, setup and view. To accomplish this, we will create top-level object 
which will serve as our namespace for Baby.js. Every facet needs to start with JS native annotation, along with JS import describing what we want to load from modules. We can then define its values and methods, view, which is used to access the canvas state, and setup. The right hand side of methods and values in a facet must be equal to JS native. This is called JS idiosyncrasy, necessary for the members not to be considered abstract in Scala. As a next step, we will need to implement missing type, view. We start again with JS native annotation, but this time we are not using JS import because it's a trade. The reason behind this is that we don't want to provide straightforward way of its creation, and we will rely on getting it from other sources. In this example, from paper.js namespace. Our next step will be to implement point and rectangle in order to make code compile. We will create them as a single classes. We are now required to add both annotations JS native and JS import pointing at proper module where the class is defined. Other than that, all previous rules still apply. Now we're on the left with implementation of raster path and color. In order to finish writing the facet, again, we are going to follow the rules and documentation. As you can see, this was straightforward but required us to do additional work and research on the library, even if we only implemented a small part of its functionalities. Despite that, it allowed us to precisely define the API to our needs or even modify it, about which you can read in the Scala.js documentation. We can now start implementing our example using the newly written facets. Let's start with creating the main body of our application. If you don't know how to do it, yet again, I recommend the first watch getting started guide, which link you can find in the description, along with Paper.js version of the example we're trying to recreate. To create Paper.js canvas, we require an existing HTML canvas element in our DOM. For that, we will create a canvas container, in which we will later add the canvas. We can now start the development server and incremental compilation. It can be done by running fasting JS in SVD and in your shell yarn dev. The screen will be empty for now as canvas is empty. To create our application, we will create a class manual passat which takes two arguments, container ID, which will be an ID of previously created container and the image name you want to animate. We will also import our facet to make it easier to use. To use Paper.js, we need to set it up with methods we've created in our facet. First, we are going to create a new canvas and manually cast it as HTML canvas element. Next, we will set both the width and height of it to 500 pixels. Then we append the canvas to the canvas container element and we can finally set up Paper.js by calling setup method. For the moment, it won't affect the website in any visual way. As a next step, we're going to add load image method. For this, we'll use raster class. We will also explicitly set its visibility to true for a moment, just to check if the image could properly load. Our web application should now display Scala logo. If the image is displayed properly, we will need to set its visibility to false as we want to show an image created from the spiral animation. We can now start implementing the logic behind creation of our spiral. For that, we'll create three values. Max, standing for maximum distance from the center of the image. Start, as the center of the image. Position with initial value set to start and count set to zero. We also need to create a path, which will be our spiral, and we will fill it with white color. With initial values, we can move to implementing spiral creation algorithm. Each call of this method will add the next part of the spiral, which will be then animated. We will now follow the tutorial straight from the Paper.js website by defining the vector value, adding the angle and length, which should create a fragment of spiral. Then we are going to rotate it by 90 degrees and assign the result into a new value. The rotated part will serve as a spiral line with n segments. To calculate it, we will get average color at the created fragment segment, 
then by extracting the grayscale and multiplying it by a constant factor, we will have the length. As a next step, we must set the length of the rotated segment to the calculated value. And finally, construct the path. The algorithm finishes by updating the current position of the spiral. The main logic of the program is now finished, and we can focus on animating the process. We will set on load method to set growth status to true. To add animation and call growth spiral method, we will again set function this time on paper.js view on frame. It is run on every frame, and if the growth is set to true, it will add another segment to the spiral. When the spiral is higher than max value, it finishes the animation and sets growth to false. To display the result on our canvas, we also need to call finish method after loading the image. After finishing up this tutorial, you should end up with the following animation. If you're curious about the internals and the implementation, please take a look at the Paper.js website for further information. We can now move to the second part of this video, which explains and shows how to use scalably type to generate facets for us. The process is simple. The sole requirement of scalably type is that the library you want to use includes TypeScript definitions. We can then add it to a project. In our example, it can be done by adding a new plugin to the plugin's SBD file located in the project directory. We also have to activate the plugin in our build SBD file. It is done by adding enable plugins method call with scalably typed converter external npm plugin value. This is only one of the possibilities, but we won't cover other options in this tutorial. As the last part of the configuration, we must set external npm setting to point at the base directory in which packet JSON is located. If you are using yarn instead of npm, you will also need to set use yarn value to true. Everything is now ready to go. To generate facets, we can either compile the code or run the Steam port command directly in the SBT shell. Remember that in order for the changes in build setting to take place, you must reload the shell by running reload command. After running this command, we should see logs from the facet generation process. They will be only created once and updated as the dependencies change. We can now try to implement the same example, but this time with scalably type generated facets. It is worth adding that after the facets are generated, you should also reindex your ID of choice its completions and other functionalities may not contain results from the generated code. We will now modify the previous example, just to show how easy it is to use scalably typed in your application. Firstly, we will rename our class to scalably typed facet and replace facet import with our generated one. In this line, we are also renaming the main package mod to paper.js, to allow clear separation between dependencies. We will also replace Scala logo with scalably typed one. As the next part, we will see that our code has a few errors. First of them is that there is no such class as raster. The reason behind this is that in manually written facet, we made it a top level class, but in generated one, it is in paper.js namespace. To fix it, we will prepare it with package name, paper.js. In the next method, create spiral grow, we have to prep a package name to the path. Everything should now compile, and in your browser you should be able to see the finished animation. This time, thanks to the scaling lead type. This is a powerful tool, which can be highly customized and configured starting from the flavor of the generated code to changing generated code from builders to big single apply methods. It can be a time saver when we want to use part or whole library in our Scala.js application. Summing up, if you want to have precise API customized for your needs, it can be worth to create facet on Wally. It is a bit tedious, but after it's done, you're ready to work with it. It also may require knowledge of the library, and it can get really complex the larger it is. On the other hand, Scalably type offers you almost no additional work solution. Maintenance of the facet will be also automated in comparison to manually written facets. 
Thanks again for your attention. I welcome you to check the Scalably time documentation, where you can find further information on configuration, design choices, and contributing tutorial. Make sure to also check Scala.js JavaScript interoperability guide. All the links will be in the description. Thank you.